Okay, I hope you can hear me with that fan rolling. It's kind of hot out here. I got this 318. This is the one a long time ago I put that Honda engine in. And they got one with an owner and other people has them too. And a lot of times you end up with this problem. Not watch it not do it now. Sometimes it does and sometimes it don't. You get the idea, right? Oh, you know, they got the seat up so far. Let me fall off on my head. But anyway, what I'm going to do is years ago, even when these had Onans in them, John Deere had what they called, I think it was a starter improver kit. They sold. It's not available now, but it's just a relay. And this one may have even had one on it before we did the um, engine swap or whatever. But it's just a relay. And what we're going to do is put a relay back on it and see if that fixes our problem. You know, because it's got to come through the key switch. Got to come through this key switch and there's a fuse involved and there's a um, the delay box and everything else to run that solenoid and that solenoid takes more power than just a simple relay does to run so let me get a few things here and we'll get started work this cover off and there we are where the magic is okay so what I got I got my test light to ground up there I got it on the battery ground we just tested the battery a couple days ago and it was bad so he went and bought a new battery but it still clicks some and here see how bright that light is this is the main power comes in the battery okay this blue wire comes up here to where we spliced in this is the original wire that comes to the starter I don't know if you can see that or not up here but anyway that's what energizes the solenoid so you got to have a pretty good 12 volt supply to energize that solenoid completely, all right? If not, after a while you start burning contacts and making it dirty and then it doesn't want to go good. So let me turn this one light off. That way you guys can probably see the test light better. Now, notice the brightness. Okay, and now watch the brightness when I crank it. If it's noticeably dimmer, then we're on to something here. Where'd the key go? There it is. Now watch when I crank. That was a good one there, but it clicked. See how weak it is? Compared to that. So it's not getting complete voltage there all the time. So we're going to try to do that starter relay. Now if you wanted to, you could go through the positive terminal to here with your multimeter and do a voltage drop test. But, but the light bulb tells us enough that we're getting weak on the connection there. So what we're going to do is put a relay in. John Deere called it starter improvement kit. I don't know if I can bring that up or not where they had that, but it's just going to be another relay. I'll have to figure out some place to put the relay, but it's just going to bolt here. And what we'll do is um, power the relay with a wire coming off of here directly from the battery. And then whenever the relay gets energized, that wire there will make the relay energize this wire going to the blue one. And the blue wire is what will be the new trigger for the relay itself. Make no sense, does it? Okay. Now here's what I've got. I've got a... I chose to use a five-prong relay. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, you got this. It takes less power to energize this relay than it does this big electric solenoid. Okay? 
that's the theory here I think all I gotta do now is I gotta figure out some place to mount this thing you know I don't want to just leave it dangling around we'll, we'll try to figure out somewhere to put it and I'll kinda go over why I chose this and a little bit what I'm gonna do so you got the positive going to the battery the hooks to the starter and you got this blue wire that goes up that's to come the key switch that triggers it I got a ground down here so we're pretty much good to go probably except for mountain okay I think maybe it's a mistake but there's a hole right here already alright and I can put that relay right here and just let it hang down in there and then my ground wire will be long enough that I don't have to add on I won't have to add on to go to here and I won't have to add on to come to here so I can do it all with the wire provided pretty much yeah that's what we're going to do not the ideal location I guess but it's the way it is is there any stipulation that a relay has to be mounted up and down I don't know hope not find out and let's go ahead and see if this drops very much out right here see it doesn't hardly drop at all so we know it's not voltage drop to here and we know it's because this wire is not always given full contact. As long as this wire has enough power to energize that relay, this should be golden. Still probably ought to go back and check any kind of fuses, any kind of connections, just to see if you can get a stronger power here, okay? That'd be my only other suggestion. And I probably will do that. I might go back up and see what I can do. Okay, let me see if we can go over this a little bit. Number 30. Okay, that, remember that's our main power. Up here we have the battery that's grounded on one side and the main power we had going to that top big nug on the lug on the um, starter. So we need a wire from number 30 up to this big lug. Alright, that's where we need our first wire. <clears throat> now, we're going to pull the wire that used to come from the key switch it went different places but just to generalize here went from the key switch to that starter solenoid okay we'll pull that wire off and leave it dangle over here somewhere actually instead of leaving it dangle let's just go ahead and connect it it goes to key switch wire that used to go to here will now go to number 86 all right go to your number 86 terminal this 85 over here this is just gonna come out here it's gonna go to ground all right bad ground symbol <clears throat> at least it was 87 a and 87 now on a 5, remember, 87A is normally closed. We don't want that. So let's just forget that one, okay? That leaves us with number 87. You guessed it. Number 87 is going to come right up here where we took the blue wire off to the starter. So now, normally closed relay would be like going from number 30 to number 87. And I got these set so you can hear them beep, okay? So, what would happen here is number 30 and number 87 is always connected. There's always a path through here, it's connected. And then when you energize the relay, it opens that path. So, it would be like the light switch is always turned on. When you energize it, it turns the light switch off. See here it. So, you also can buy four terminal switch or uh, relays that are normally open and that would be number 30 and number 87 here is normally open 
So it's always like the light switch is off until you energize the relay and then it connects 30 to 87 and sends power through which is what we have here. Okay, no beep. And that's what you want. If you have it normally closed or you hook it to this middle one the tractor will crank over all the time. So that's why I buy these because I have an option of normally closed or open if I need to. Does that make sense now? More than me trying to explain it? Even. Numbers in. The key input, electric coming in to energize this thing will be number 86. Number 30, the even number that's the only not 80 number is where the main power comes in to run your load that you're going to run which is going to be the starter solenoid which 87 is an odd number goes out 85 is an odd number that goes out to ground and 87A would have been an odd number going out so the evens come in, odds go out remember 30, the oddball is where the main power comes to run your load that you're going to run, whether this be lights or starter or whatever and 87 carries it on through and 86 and 85 is what energizes this relay now see this this thing's pinned it has no wire on the ground over here but it has a wire on 87 and I mean 87 and 87A. So I'm going to unpin these wires and I don't put them in where I want to. And I don't put the collars where I want to, right or wrong. Can you see this little tab on here? It sticks up. I ain't going to focus it. If you look inside the terminal, see how it comes straight across. That comes straight across and there's a little dip down here. You don't take something, you just don't put this in that behind that little dip, and then you're gonna push down. What you're doing, you're pushing that pin down. Actually push it on the wire, push the pin down, then just slide them right out. Hope that showed up on there. Put the pin in above the wire, push push in and then pull the wire right out put it in there pull down push in and pull the wire right out all you're doing is inserting that in there and pushing that little pin down so you could use a little pick little baby screwdriver whatever now I'm going to sit here and put the collars where I want them right wrong or indifferent so I'm going to say if you hold this up there number 30 that's where I want my red one so you just line that up, that little dentation down in the front, you put the tab on that side, you're back in business. If this works, I'll take this connection out later and just put a solid wire from here to here. I'll get a piece of purple wire and put a new connector on. But for now, this is what we got. Um, this yellow wire is number 86. It comes to that blue wire. This blue wire here is going to hook to the starter, a little spade on the starter. This red one will hook right here to that power. And then this white one that I painted black with a marker is going to go right to that ground. And other than waterproof, and I don't think these really need to be in any certain way, but when I put that in here, it will be slanted down a little bit, so I don't think water will go up in it. You don't really mow in the rain anyhow. So I got me a quarter inch bolt, I'm hoping that'll be plenty. That's a quarter by half, or three quarter, I'm gonna go to a quarter by half, so it ain't as much sticking in there. Well, the battery's hooked back up. Let's try it. If it goes up in smoke, we might as well watch it together. And I ain't gonna let it... Well, I guess I should. Yeah. Set the brake. Okay. So I already hooked the black one to that ground, the bolt, the engine mount bolt. 
I'm going to loosen this starter wire up. Watch when you do that, you don't want to turn the whole stud, okay? Now we want to grab power from there. Stick this right on there. That'll be good. Matter of fact, I'll put it out this way. Now I'll put it down that way. I just don't want it to stick out into this side cover. Or in the way of putting that blue wire. Notice I'm only using a quarter inch drive. You want that good and tight but not broke off. That makes sense? I hope it makes sense. Now, like I say, at a later date I'll address this. Matter of fact, I think I will tape it up before I hide that wires. So that leaves with one wire, I just gotta find it. The blue one here. And I just gotta get that on that terminal. So let me take this wire up. We'll hook up the battery. And we'll see if it starts. How about that? It'll be alright that you won't even notice that relay is down there really. As long as no water and stuff gets in it. I think we'll be fine. Okay, now we'll try it. I did some brake locking. So far, no smoke. Every time. set for a few minutes we'll come back to it and try that again but it's clicking every time now so okay that's a normally open relay and it was about a 40 amp relay I think is what they said it was let's just see what we get Seems like it's going to be every time. Um, I'll let it go for just a little while. And if there's no troubles with it, then I'll post this video. If there was any troubles, I'll try to add to this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope that helps explain something and I didn't make it too confusing.